Good morning, everyone. I hope this finds you well and living your best life in Jesus Christ. Nancy, my dear long-suffering wife, says sometimes that I'm the, in many ways the most patient person she knows, while at the same time being incredibly impatient. I'll admit, I like to develop a plan and then get to it. And even though I can be very patient when things get started and take what I think of as way too long, nonetheless, having to wait to get something going is problematic for me. How serious is a lack of patience? We generally write it off as inconsequential. It's often seen as a weakness rather than a sin. After all, it's not as bad as adultery or theft or murder or other sins. But have you ever considered what your impatience reveals about your attitude toward God? When we demonstrate an inability to tolerate delay, we're telling the Lord, I don't trust your timing, mine's better. <laughs> Can you see the seriousness of this attitude? Impatience is a display of pride because we're elevating our understanding because of that of an all-knowing God. Impatience is a form of unbelief. It's what we begin to feel when we start to doubt the wisdom of God's timing or the goodness of his guidance. It springs up in our heart when the road to success gets muddy or strewn with boulders or blocked by some fallen tree. And the battle with impatience can be a little skirmish over a long wait in a checkout line or it can be major combat over a handicap or a disease or circumstances that knocks out half of our dreams. For example, we had these great plans for the youth program this summer. This was going to be great. We were going to grow the church and get out into our community. The calendar was all set and we were all ready to go. And then, bam, coronavirus. <laughs> Weeks of isolation followed by preaching to an empty church. Now followed by a very cautious opening of services. This makes sense, of course. We must be as safe as we can during this pandemic. And yet, truth be told, I'm not the only one who just wants this over and to get back to our regular services, regular worship, and regular church activities. But we are called to be patient. The people say the, that impatience, when you're not, when you know that you're patient, you're kind of glib. Well, that's not true. The opposite of impatience is not a glib. Super, superficial denial of frustration, we're allowed to be frustrated. The opposite of impatience is a deepening, ripening, peaceful witnessing or willingness to wait for God where you are in a place of obedience or to persevere at the pace he allows on the road to obedience, to wait in his place or to go at his pace. When the way you plan to run your day or the way you plan to live your life is cut off or slowed down, the unbelief of impatience tempts you in two directions, depending on partly on your personality and partly on your circumstances. On the one side, it tempts you to give up, bail out. If there's going to be frustration and opposition and difficulty, then I'll just forget it. I'm sure I've not had been the only person that ever thought that, but I've heard it from many people. I won't keep this job. I won't take this challenge. I won't rear this child. I won't stay in this marriage. I won't live this life. That's one way the unbelief of impatience tempts you. Give up. On the other side, impatience tempts you to make rash counter moves against the obstacles in your way. It tempts you to be impetuous or hasty or impulsive or even reckless. Frankly, in our current circumstances, many people of late seem to be making these same types of impetuous choices about their health and everyone else's. People seem to think this thing is over when it's not. But they impatiently neglect basic safety, which in my mind is a recipe for disaster. Whichever way you have to battle impatience, the main point today is that it's a battle against unbelief, and therefore it's not merely a personality issue, it's a faith issue. It's the issue of whether you live by faith and whether you inherit the promises of eternal life. Listen to these verses in a sense of how vital this battle is. In Luke 21, 19, it says, By your endurance, also known as patience, you will give, gain your lives. Romans 2, 7, To those who by patience and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, God will give you eternal life. Hebrews 6, 12 says, Do not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Let's face it, patience is doing the will, in doing the will of God is not an optional value in the Christian life. And the reason it's not is because faith is not an optional value. Patience in well-doing is the fruit of faith. 
And impatience, let's just be blunt, is the faith of unbelief. And so the battle against impatience is a battle against unbelief. So as much as we want to, things to get back to normal, let's wait upon the Lord today and not let a lack of faith demonstrated by our impatience cause us to suffer needlessly in both the short term and the long term. Let's just remind ourselves, he's got this. He knows what he's doing. He knows the timetable. Let's just wait and see. I hope you have a terrific day today. I want you to know that I'm here if you need me. And I love you all.